Today we're going to begin to look at the book of the Song of Solomon. <clears throat> this is an instance where I only have three or four days to really go through this entire book. And each day I get about two or three minutes. And the time is just about up. So what do I do? Well, let me just give you a few background uh, ideas in this book. First, this is about a man and a woman who are in love. It's snapshots, if you will, of their courting relationship and then their marriage. And the Old Testament knows nothing of the word bachelor. Everyone's married. It's just the way that it is. You had to be married if you were a high priest. Uh, there's only one prophet we know of that God told to become a bachelor, and that was Jeremiah. So married love was just... I mean, the first thing you find in the Bible, Adam and Eve, you know, first day, the sixth day of creation. In the New Testament, you find, you know, very few that are not married. You find Jesus and you find the Apostle Paul who, you know, says it can actually be better not to be married. But you find that Jesus' first miracle is the wedding at Cana of Galilee. And you find in Revelation this marriage of the uh, su marriage supper of the Lamb and Marriage is, uh, and romance is, is proclaimed in Scripture. And so this is just this seminal book on love and you know what this ought to look like. And so today, I just want to look at really the first two, two or three verses. And uh, it's actually repeated in chapter 4 a little bit too. But the four things that attracted her to Solomon, this, this Shulamite woman, and then He'll be attracted to her for the very same three reasons, four reasons in chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. He begins by saying, or she begins by saying in verse 2, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. The first thing that attracts her is the way he looks, his lips, if you will. And that's the way it goes. I mean, when you begin to like somebody, you know, romantically, you like the way they look. And... That ought to be there. I've, I've talked to people that are so spiritual, way more spiritual than me, and they'll be like, well, you know, I'm not really attracted to her, but she's a really godly girl. I'm not really attracted to him, but I, I just say stop right there. If you're not attracted to them, this isn't going to work. And if there's not, you know, I'll be in marriage counseling with folks, and there's like, yeah, we're not really even uh, in any kind of temptation. If there's no temptation you're probably with the wrong person, all right? There should be physical attraction. Otherwise, it's probably isn't going to work. The second thing that attracted her to him was his love. He says, your love is better than wine. So love is simply kindness in action. It's how you treat another person with kindness. And so in a dating relationship, there ought to be lots of kindness. When you're courting, if, it, if you're not... When I talk to couples and, and they're you know wanting to get married and they're already fighting, there's not a lot of kindness, I just tell them right up, you shouldn't get married and I'm not the one who's going to do it. You know, I'm not going to make the mistake for you. Because if you're dating and your courting relationship is tumultuous, uh, you got some real problems. Uh, the, the third thing that attracted her to him was his lotion. I got to have an L because I'm a preacher. But it says, because the fragrance... fragrance of your ointment. So you call it ointment or lotion. But he smelled good. He took care of himself. He tried to make himself, you know, attractive to her. That's a good thing. And you know, it's something that you need to not forget in marriage. I see men and, you know, God help your wives because you don't shower, you don't shave, you don't brush your teeth, and you wonder why she's not attracted to you anymore. This is something that you've got to do in marriage. And women, you should try to look good for your husband. And the fourth thing that attracted uh, her to him was his lifestyle. He says in verse um, 3, the fragrance of your, uh, because the fragrance of your ointment and, uh, your, and your name is ointment poured forth, therefore the virgins love you. Now, when he, she, she says the virgins love you, she's saying that they're, they admire you. You know, you, you're an admired person because of your lifestyle, your character. This is often the last thing that we look at. And sometimes if, we, if we're attracted and they love us, 
deal done. But this is so, so important. It's the most important thing. What kind of person do you want to be with? Is this a person that loves Christ? If they don't love Christ and you do, you're going to be unequally yoked. It's a big problem. Is this a person who you respect? You know, I tell ladies, you know, when we're in marriage counseling, if this is not a person that you can submit to, if you don't respect him for what he is now, then you ought not marry him. If you think he's just about where he needs to be and you're going to help him to get to where he needs to be, don't even start this thing. You need to pick a man that you already respect. And guys, same thing. You need to pick a girl that you already respect, not one that you think you can change. But when you're in the marriage relationship, as you work on your character, now you can't work on your husband's character for him. You probably know that if you're married. You can't work on your wife's character for her. You probably know that, right? But as you work on your own character, what happens is, your relationship does get stronger and they will admire you for what you're becoming. This is a great book for you to read before you get married. It's a great book to read after you get married. It's one of the 66 books of the Bible. It's all about love and romance and I hope that you uh, enjoy reading it with me.